Hey guys, Matt, Iron Trap Garage, and we are uh, trying to fit in the last little bit of fun before winter time, and uh, we took a quick little jump out to Michigan to visit with our buddy Josh, who is over at the Gilmore Museum, and he invited us out to shoot some videos, uh, visit some collections, and we're also gonna do a little bit of picking, so it's gonna be a really fun trip. We're gonna give you guys a smattering of awesome stuff to see, and uh, we're also gonna be filming some videos that we will put out uh, later in the year uh, but first we need to jump on a boat and take a quick little rip around the lake because it's just perfect weather and why not so jump in the boat and then we're gonna go check out some neat old hot rods at Jeff's house Locks in them out here because there's so many cars. Obviously, and then this is like you call this the little lake in here, and then the big lakes on the other side. Yeah. Jeff's house is actually like right over there. Oh, okay. So, yeah. so you drive around and it's five minutes or ten minutes, but you know I can take the boat over there and be there in two <laughs> seconds. All right, you off. hanging on? Yes, sir. need one of these. I do. <laughs> Fun. I would get so much trouble. <laughs> There's no police on the lake, Matt. Yeah, there could be. <laughs> now that's a way to start off a trip. Yeah. Alright, how soon should we expect a flathead powered ski boat? Well, I do have some parts on the shelf for Converting it's a flathead meant, it's to a meant to be. vintage parts, but oh god, sounds sounds twice as expensive as a as a car. As a blown Arden? Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Well. Yeah, but at least you can drive that on the street all like whenever you want. But that was really fun. That was awesome. That's a great way to start a trip. Now we're gonna um, actually take a little loop around the river. I'm um, the river. The, uh, <laughs> the Jesus around the lake and uh, go over to Jeff's place. He is the uh, current president of the Gilmore Museum and uh, also he is a hardcore hot rodder and car nut and uh, we're gonna check out his shop. He's got a couple really interesting hot rods in there uh, with some provenance and, and uh, we're gonna check those out and speak with him and just get kind of the background of what, what the Gilmore Museum is all about. <laughs>
My name is Jeff Romig, and I've been a car enthusiast most of my life. I guess ever since my cousin dragged a 1951 Chevy business coupe over to my house in the early 70s, and uh, to the surprise of my mom and dad, that was my first car. And um, I've ended up then working in the auto industry most of my career. I'm currently president of the Gilmore Car Museum in Hickory Corners, Michigan, which is near Kalamazoo, Michigan, halfway between Detroit and Chicago, and within about 300 miles of over 40 million people. Our site was established in the mid-60s by Donald Gilmore, who uh, started out a hobby in, in his retirement of restoring old cars. And it has turned into this wonderful campus now with over 400 cars, 200,000 square feet under roof, seven partner museums, and one of the, one of the largest collections uh, of classic cars of all kinds and makes in, in the world. So the car behind me is a car that we call the Long Beach Legend. It was built by Hollywood Hot Rods in Burbank, California. It's a 1936 Ford Roadster, but it's been heavily modified, but modified in a way to keep it as a uh, period correct hot rod. And, uh, and also the story of the Long Beach Legend has to do with the fact that Lincoln never made a Roadster. And we knew that Lincoln had a plant in Long Beach, California, Ford had a plant in Long Beach, California, where they made both Lincolns and Fords under the same roof. And we got this idea of the people in the plant always wondering why they couldn't make a Lincoln Roadster using the Ford Roadster with the classic design with all of the really cool Lincoln parts. This car is equipped with a uh, 1940 292 Lincoln V12, a 1937 Lincoln Zephyr Waterfall Dash, 1939 Lincoln Zephyr steering wheel, uh, 1937 Lincoln Zephyr taillights and trunk lid. And so it's kind of like Johnny Cash, one piece at a time, but it's all linked to the story of the Long Beach legend of the Long Beach, uh, California Ford plant, where these guys all wanted to build the best roadster they could using all these cool vintage Lincoln parts. Did you find this body or you just wanted to do a 36 roadster? I wanted to do a 36 roadster. I found this car. Palm Springs, California. Okay. And Troy and I went over it and thought, thought it was a pretty good car until we took it out and had it blasted. Oh, and then everything. It POS. It had about probably three restorations. Okay. None of them were good. You know, all different generations of welding yeah. and bracing yeah. and stuff like that. But she's solid now. Yeah, oh yeah. That's a it was a big geometry challenge with moving the front fenders forward four inches and leaving the grill in the stock position. Yeah. And then making it look like a 36 in the front. And the best thing, the thing we were going for, and I get this all the time, is people say, oh, I'm glad you left it stock. <laughs> yeah. Yep, perfect. It was a little bit more, expe bit more expensive than that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'd like to talk a little bit about my 1932 Ford five window coupe. We call it the Harry Lira Senior Coupe. This is a coupe that was built in the 1950s by a guy named Harry Lyris who had a shop in Northern California. He had bought this B model Ford uh, a couple of years prior to that. And in his shop, he worked on all of the county police cars and they happened to have a brand new Buick police car that they wrecked. And he bought the 322 Buick nail head and then the rest, as they say, is history, as he took that nail head and made it to this B model Ford and made really the ultimate hot rod of the 1950s. It's traditional in every way, including, uh, of course, the, the original steel body and also all of the hot rod accoutrements of the time, including a full dash full of Stuart Warner gauges that every, dash in the, every gauge in the dash works just like it did when Harry installed them back in 1955, 1956 and we're just really, really pleased with this car. The only changes I've really made to it since I acquired it is to put new wiring in it just to make sure it was safe. We put a new clutch in it and uh, worked on just a few little mechanical things just to make sure the car was running and driving and safe. But it's just exactly as Harry built it, uh, warts and all, and it's just a wonderful car to drive. Did you have to clean the interior or anything up or was this kind of yeah, like? Yeah, the interior was a little bit discolored. 
biggest thing was the wiring. The wiring oh, yeah. was really hosed up. <laughs> like the dimmer switch, he had a, an old floor dimmer switch yep. bolted under here, so I guess you were supposed to use it by hand. Oh. So what I what I did is when I rewired the car, I just wired it so one click out is dim and the second click out is bright. Ah, uh, yeah. Alright, so we're done in Fisher Lake and Jeff gave us an incredible tour of his collection. We even got to drive in some really amazing cars and it was an amazing time. Just stepping right off of the plane and here we are in the midst of just hot rod heaven. So tomorrow what we're going to do is actually take a trip over to the Gilmore Museum and spend a couple of days going through all the different exhibits and just getting some first-hand experience of what they have and uh, everything they have to offer. Can't wait. All right, so we just got done doing a bunch of filming at the museum, had a great time, and we're gonna uh, take a little break until after hours where we're gonna do some snooping around in the, the vault area. So we were gonna do dinner, but 
of course I have a pick in my back pocket so we are uh, doing a little trip that's maybe about 30 minutes from the museum uh, to go see some stuff uh, that one of our viewers sent us a lead on and uh, I hear that there's some 32 parts possibly laying around and just old stuff in general so we're gonna take a quick jump do that and instead of eating dinner we're gonna do some picking because I'm a sleeve driver which so uh, yeah we're gonna see what we can find All right, so we're doing lots of things that are making them uncomfortable here. So one of the first things we're going to do is this extremely rare one of one, basically race car. We're going to try and open the hood because I want to see what's under the hood and show you guys. So we're going to try and figure out how to carefully open the hood on this uh, Packard twin six racer and uh, see what the engine looks like. All right, we get our mitts on. Can we try? You guys can help me. Are you guys, am I, or am I the only one that's going to jail here? Is that the... Consensus. I'm just a camera guy. Well, I'll be a team player. You guys, too. you guys are all accomplices, so either way, it's like robbing a bank, and it's like we're all going to get in trouble. It's just a matter of who does the most time. Got it. Just needed to, just needed the, uh, oh, there it goes into the other. All right, there's that. There's this. Okay, leather strap out of the way. That's there. Okay, we're good. Get your finger in the exhaust port. Maybe. Got it? All right, Mike. Bada bing. Wow. wow. Look at the intake on that thing. Takes All right, we're gonna take you off the tripod here. Get Lighting. The Look at the engine on this. This is Look incredible. At the distributor up front. What are you doing back there? Uh, oh. um, yeah, so this is the parts department in the Model A Museum, you know, night at the Gilmore, we're kind of What's breaking boundaries. This? So honestly, what, what caught my eye, the plan on getting yelled at or kicked out, is NOS. Did you see what's in that? Oh God. <laughs> These are all like original NOS in the crate parts. So this is a... Uh, it's a hood. Hood in the crate as dated. It's the, the tag actually says, it says do not open crate. Uh, October 17th, 1929, it was shipped. There's another crate here that um, I think has an engine block in it possibly. But over here, there's a door in a crate. It's dated 1928. Uh, that is, I don't even know what's in there. Grill shell, didn't you say? I'm not sure. These crates might be actually kind of empty, but this one has a door in it, and we have a fender in this one. So and it's really cases good. filled with... Yeah, with like incredible accessories and different parts in here. Uh, some of the prices. There's some original, original uh, of the Pines winter front grills. Yeah, motor guards. And really cool is a camp grill that's back there ford briquette Bri yeah briquette camp grill that's just so cool so it's really neat to see all these parts in one place it's incredible and i'm gonna I get a shot of i can get a shot of this counter i mean there's carburetors head gaskets cranks i'm gonna get wheels. from behind the counter before some alarm goes off and i get handcuffed well uh, can you empty your pockets sir yeah sir can you please i swear where saving a young girl's life behind the counter. <laughs> what are you doing? Uh, I really want one of these. Josh, <laughs> yell at him. <laughs> we probably want to be welcome back, so I'm going to get out of here before we uh, get in trouble. We got a whole load of stuff. I don't even think we could fit in in the car, to be honest. Oh, uh, we could do some rearranging. <laughs> we could do some rearranging. Oh my God, so it's been a crazy, crazy time at the Gilmore Museum. It's been 
ridiculous. We spent like two days here wandering around and it's been really incredible to see everything. Everything we got to see, the hospitality was amazing. Um, all the volunteers that were standing around the museum kind of watching everything were giving us information. Uh, the staff was just incredible. So this has been like a life-changing experience. I, I now want to own a, a stock Model T. We found that after here. And uh, I want to own a Duesenberg, but that'll never happen. Maybe the, we'll start with the Model T. <laughs> yeah, let's baby steps, Mike, yeah, baby yeah. steps. So now we, we definitely want to thank the Gilmore Museum for giving us uh, all this, all the help and allowing us to come film and just show everything that is the museum. We have a ton of really great videos coming out for them in the future. We're just giving you a little spotlight here in our travel video. But now we need to get back in the truck and I need to call on the Eastwood Awesome store again because we got junk drunk and uh, we bought a bunch of stuff and the rental car is like full of junk and we need to book it over there, fill a pallet of stuff and then return the rental car and get on a plane before we miss it. So hopefully we can, uh, traffic is nice to us so we can do it. So let's get going. All right, so uh, luckily the, uh, Trevor in the Allsup store came to our rescue and I sent a text message late, late the other night. I was Again. like, help! <laughs> so we have a, a pallet uh, we dropped here. They're always nice enough to let us just kind of like throw some stuff on a pallet and they help us get some of the stuff safely back home. They always feel bad for how poorly we pack pallets. Mm -hmm. So uh, we got all the stuff. We got some really amazing stuff. We didn't get the cover at all because the pick we were doing is kind of a private location, but um, just really I, cool trip. I bought a bunch of big stuff. He did. I usually buy like small things or a couple beer signs. I bought large porcelain and tin signs, a few beer trays, and Matt and I actually split like a very large magazine, a portion of a very yeah. large magazine collection. <laughs> I talked him into it. Yeah, he kind of did, but uh, it was really cool. Again, we want to thank Josh and the Gilmore Museum folks for allowing us to come and just run amok Dude. in their in their <laughs> in their building. Um, <laughs> We're going to be doing uh, the whole reason we were doing this is we're going to be launching a bunch of videos and uh, towards the spring for the Gilmore Museum, kind of promoting the museum and why you need to go to the museum. Uh, it's really awesome. It was mind blowing. We can't wait to go back. So thank you, to those folks. It was super, thank you. super, super fun. Yeah, it was, I, it was out of hand. Amazing. So uh, it was a world when we were basically like a little over 48 hours we we're in, in the area. So uh, it was just crazy and. Now we get to, uh, we're gonna jump on a plane and hopefully this stuff makes it back okay. I got some, I got one thing that I'm like ridiculously excited about. So uh, we'll show you guys when we get it back. So yeah. thank you guys for watching. It's been a ton of fun. See you later.